Hi, this is Kim. Thank you for joining me. Today we have a guest interview of an individual, Wayne Moore, who is out of North Richland Hills, Texas. Wayne sent me a message about a vision that he received just a few days ago, and I am going to turn this over to him to share with you the body of Christ for this profound vision and his interpretation and impression and feeling about the purpose behind it as well. Wayne, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Thank you for joining me, and I'd like to just turn things over to you. And you said that you had this vision on Friday evening, March 2nd. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Go ahead and just tell everyone the setting that you were in and then what happened and feel free to tell your story. And did you actually see the courtroom, or was it more that you were just listening? It was more of just listening, um, hearing the back and forth between the people, and occasionally I would see things, but it wasn't as if I was sitting there looking at a, you know, like a, a typical, like a law and order set. I was uh, sitting there, and they started bringing these accusations against me. A lot of it had to do with just me personally. Um, I was called a, a wolf and a dragon, and I was told um, you know, that I had perhaps believed lies and that sort of thing. A lot of the accusations weren't, uh, they didn't make any sense to me, because I know that I was being lied on. Uh, but what I found most interesting is the subjects that were coming up in the court case. Uh, there was this talk of uh, the name of Jesus um, and how it's pronounced through, through the ages and how we say it today. Uh, another thing that was brought up had to do with uh, oneness versus trinity. Um, and it, it was just me in the middle of this. And I saw life uh, from, from a different perspective. So while I was uh, experiencing this trial and these accusations, at the same time, I was also being showed as if there's this underlying world or dimension that's fully operational around us. And it was completely uh, aligned with end time prophecy and biblical events. Okay, and what were the, ac you said you saw, or you, you heard the accusations, and you shared with me that you even heard remarks about a tattoo, and you saw the barcodes. Feel free to just go into as much detail, we have plenty of time here, to um, share as much as you can recall and the conversations that took place. First of all, share a little bit of your background uh, as far as church, and possibly that will help a little bit of your perspective. Absolutely. So, um, I'm a born-again child of God. Um, I'm not a big fan of labels and that sort of thing. Uh, I was raised one Miss Pentecostal. Today, I uh, simply am pursuing God and reading the Word and letting Him, you know, be, be, be the light, be the shepherd, be the direction. Um, and so I uh, recently had I attended a church for, for several years and we chose to leave. And then right afterwards, um, God began to deal with me about uh, the way that he views things that are happening in our world today, specifically dealing with the 
denominations and division in the church and the fighting between denominations back and forth. Um, and so this is uh, kind of all culminating because whenever I was a child, I was very much into end time prophecy. The first book of the Bible I read was the book of Revelation. And I had dreams for many years about that. Um, so I, I've always had this interest in it, you know, I've, I've been excited about that sort of thing. Um, so in this vision that I had, I was accused of having the mark of the beast. I was told that I had marked it, uh, it meaning the body that I'm inhabiting right now, the, the flesh. And I saw that there is this correlation between the way that we live our lives daily and, um, and what the Bible talks about. Uh, it says that he causes all, both great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on the right hand or the forehead without which they, you know, they may not buy or sell. So I noticed that the barcodes on the uh, products that I have just in my home. It was, I see the barcode and they're digital. But then I also saw that behind that digital is that there's this spiritual implication to that as if it's scanning. Um, you know, so, so no matter what we use, uh, it, it, it has these little barcodes on it. I saw the, you know, the tattoo on my arm, uh, the watch that I have, which is one of those Apple watches I can pay things with that. The phone that I have uh, is an Apple iPhone X, um, and it reads my face, and I'm allowed to make purchases after it does that with Face ID. And it just was this realization that the um, the mark, the Antichrist, the one world government, that whole system is already in effect um, and happening behind the scenes. But we don't recognize it because uh, we're not really taught to see it. And we're looking for something else. We're looking for an implanted microchip or that sort of thing. And I'm not saying that that eventually won't happen, but the system is already in place, especially spiritually. And in the court case, I stood up and protested, uh, and I said that I, am, I did not receive this. I did not accept this. I did not take the mark. I will not take the mark. I choose to live for Jesus Christ, and I'm going to continue onward. And uh, I had no um, no intention or motive of ever taking that. But that was what I was being accused of, is because of the way that um, I interact with the environment, uh, the tattoo on my hand, which, on my arm, which uh, it's just a tribal thing that means that I'm forever, whether in heaven or hell. And it was as if this, like I said, this whole other nefarious world is existing behind the scenes. Now, the other thing that was very, uh, almost terrifying to me is that whenever they were talking about Jesus, there was a question that was raised as to what Jesus, or which Jesus I was referring to. Um, I am talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died on the cross for my sins some 2,000 years ago. But what they accused me of is that mankind, uh, especially a lot of Christians, have created this image in their mind of who Jesus Christ is, um, based on not what the Word of God says, but more of what they want him to be. So in other words, it's kind of like all of the good things, but, but none of the bad things that come with that. We want him we wanted to be the loving and caring, but we don't want him to be this righteous judge at the end. And uh, in the vision, I saw these words float in front of me, and it said this, do not make me in your own image. And when I saw that, I immediately came to that understanding that uh, a lot of times people, you know, they, they seek for relationship with God. They want to know God. But many times, because of the church they go to or the traditions that they hold, they almost color that. And so they're not trying to know him. They're trying to know their idea of him. And God 
showed me that when we do that, we, we sort of make him in our own image. Um, and the idea of that there is this other Jesus that people have made in their minds came up. Um, and, and it was terrifying because I had to say no. I mean, I, I understand I'm American and I speak English. And so when I say Jesus, that may not be the exact pronunciation used in the Hebrew, which is probably more closer to Yeshua or Joshua. I said, but I know who I'm talking about. So, uh, and what happened? You shared with you shared with me privately um, a couple of things. One is that you heard overruled objection. You kept hearing uh, those phrases. Um, I can't recall if you told me you saw or you just heard it from behind you. And the other was the sense of the this going on daily. And can you share those portions of the vision as well? Right. Yes, I know that I shared with you and a few people in my inner circle know this, that I have several times and counseled uh, others to do it as well, that I have had prayer sessions and actually considered it the courtroom. And I demanded in the name of Jesus Christ that the accuser, the adversary, be present 
And I told exactly, I, I pictured God in the position of the judge in the robe. And I pointed and I stated what he had done, what he had robbed and what he had stolen, what he was causing. And I was standing on God's word and I was telling him on his, on your, you know, your word that when a thief is caught and I went down the list and I, I've done this several times. So when, uh, Wayne, when you contacted me about this vision, it was very striking to me because of what I've sensed in my spirit. But it's so very true, the one piece that you've said here, that this happens daily, that we have to understand as believers that when we sin and we open the door to sin in our lives, we also open the door for the accuser to go straight to the throne and speak the truth of our actions to God. And based on God's law, and based on the system that is in place, it, many things that we do not understand in the spiritual realm. But when that happens, that God is only, or I should say, nothing less than released to allow. For example, the word says, do not go to bed angry, lest what? A lot of people, oh, don't ever let the sun go down on your wrath. Well, you don't read, say the rest of the sentence, lest Satan get a foothold. Have you pictured in your mind Satan reaching to your bed and grabbing your foot, your ankle, and he's got a grip on you? So you understand that when you go to bed angry, Satan's going to run to the throne and ask permission to grab your foot. And what is God going to be able to say? And Brother Wayne, I want to thank you very much for sharing this, and I know that this will be a very interesting topic to expound on and discuss and, and dissect. I think when um, parables such as this, and you shared to me that, that it was clear to you that this was a parable, that you can um, dissect it for years and pray and, and receive more and more um openings and truths to this and understandings and I encourage those that are listening that feel free to comment um, here on the YouTube channel with any insights or thoughts that you have and we look forward uh, brother Wayne um, maybe if you can pray on this some more write this out possibly we can do a part two and discuss this even further if you would like to come back and join us process of writing a book, uh, the Lord told me, he said, I'm commissioning you to write this, and if you don't write it, I'm going to get somebody else to do it. He said, but I want you to write it because you're passionate about it. And the name of the book is called The Indictment, an expose on the separation of God and the modern day church. And it's basically a, uh, a viewpoint of the things that God has shown me in relation to the church and how it operates today in comparison with scriptures, in comparison with what Jesus said, the apostles and the disciples said. Um, and it's really about striving to allow Jesus Christ to be the head of the church and for unity for everyone to come together. So uh, I, I just want to ask for you and uh, your viewers if they would pray uh, about this, because I really honestly believe that God's going to do something great with this. Amen. We certainly will. And I want to encourage um, all of us to definitely take this vision in prayer. Ask for God to reveal to you what it is that you need to know and what you can receive from this. And I apologize. <clears throat> I don't have... <clears throat> excuse me, real professional equipment. So there may be a couple of times that you may have to turn the volume up a little bit to hear Brother Wayne a little more clear. But I think that this is a profound vision that he received on Friday evening. And uh, what did you see visually? It, we'll do this in closing. Was there anything actually visually? Or was it all just a sense of listening? And I know that when we, re when we do receive words or visions, sometimes... It's more cloudy. I receive it very visually. And if you had to say there was something that you actually saw more than anything, what was it? Um, so there's there's a way that I can see um, that, that I show you that's be considered more of a vision. And it's 
not uh, physically in front of me. It's just in that mm -hmm. uh, in that spiritual eye. Um, so I did see several things there, um, but you know the 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 most uh, important thing that really stuck out to me is whenever um, this finger came up and wrote that uh, those words where it said, "Don't make me in your own image." Um, and uh, I would just I would just say to me, you know, we we have to understand that God is all about relationship. When Jesus Christ walked the earth, his biggest uh, complaint against the Old Testament, against the, the Pharisees, is that they followed the law, but they just didn't love people. And I think that that, in the New Testament, is another thing that people, um, that God could say about a lot of us, that we, we do a lot of good things, we obey his word, uh, we go to church, we're faithful, we do all of that. But we have to love. We've got to love him. We've got to love other people and let his love shine through us. Because without love, you know, we're like that tinkling brass and sounding symbol. Um, so I encourage everyone to pursue real, authentic relationship communication with God. Because if we pray to him, he will talk back to us. And we can take it to the word, and it just continues to be this adventure that uh, just grows. Amen. Well, thank you, and I encourage the with in closing here the phrase that he saw, and I wrote this down: "Do not make me in your own image." Go to the word, be faithful, love. And we'll close with that. And Brother Wayne, thank you. And listeners, I think what we'll do, maybe in a week or two, we will have Brother Wayne come back. And possibly between now and then, I think the Lord's going to reveal even more to him um, about this profound vision. Brother Wayne, thank you for joining us. And we'll talk to, we'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.